Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the I Equip Experience with Love Culture Fellowship Ministries. I am Apostle J. Devlin Jr., and I have the privilege of being the senior leader and founder of this great ministry. Here at Love Culture Fellowship Ministries, we are a fully inclusive, uh, full gospel, charismatic ministry. And we are a virtual community of faith. And that means when we say fully inclusive, that means that no matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, we welcome you. Listen, I know you guys are used to the normal routine of us having a time of worship and meet us taking prayer requests and lifting your needs before the Lord. But because we got started a little late tonight, we're going to allow Pastor, our executive pastor, Pastor Danny Guerrero, to come forth tonight and to minister to us and then uh, next Tuesday, we'll return to our uh, regular format for service. But just tonight, we're going to allow the man of God to come forth and to minister to us. So listen, we want you to like, we want you to share, and we want you to know that no matter where you are, no matter what your sexual orientation, no matter what your gender identity, no, no matter what your uh, socioeconomic status, ability or disability, uh, faith tradition, or even if you are questioning faith, we welcome you here at Love Culture. This is a ministry that welcomes everyone. And no matter where you are, we are committed to love you without condition. So on tonight, please know this. This is a safe place for you. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, this is a safe place. And there is, this, there is no way that you could ever do anything that would make you not be welcome in this virtual space. We are saving a seat just for you. And I believe that Pastor Daniel has a very thought-provoking uh, teaching talk for us tonight. So we're going to turn Pastor Daniel a loose, and I'm going to get out of the stream and allow Pastor Daniel to come back and minister to us. Receive Pastor Daniel Guerrero, our executive pastor for Love Culture Fellowship Ministries. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you as you hear the word of the Lord. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home, your workspace, uh, wherever you are. If you're watching in the car, please be careful. Uh, but wherever you are, thank you so much for allowing myself and, of course, um, this ministry to uh, come into your home, wherever you are. My name is Pastor Daniel, and I have a very thought-provoking talk for you tonight. And um, I, I, I have a tendency to kind of ruffle some feathers sometimes whenever I do things like I'm going to do tonight. But uh, I really want to ask you to open your heart, to open your mind, um, to open your spirit to what uh, I believe God, who I call Papa, wants to uh, speak to you tonight. I am going to be reading from the Word out of the Message Bible tonight, um, but I want to ask you a question. When I say the word community, what comes to your mind? When I say community, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is I live in a beautiful condo. There's about 10 condos in this building, and there's about 10 garages, and every year there is an opportunity for us to come together and uh, we share uh, cookies, we share different types of dishes, and we celebrate this little community that I have. I also think when I think community, I think of church. Now, those of you who've been raised in church, you know that church community can be quite fun. Whether you are in a youth ministry or whether you're in a young adult ministry or whether you are an adult and we have cookouts, church cookouts are some of the best uh, times that I've ever had experiencing, experienced in my personal life. The food is always so good. I think of laughter. I think of happiness. I think of joy. I think of commitment. I think of covenant. Then, of course, I think of family community. When I think of family community, I, I think of fights and quarrels and uh, disagreements and uh, makeup sessions to where we have to have heart-to-heart -heart talks. And some of those talks are deep and some of those talks are hard. Some of those thought talks are thought-provoking and some of those thought talks are, are joy-filled 
and expressed with love and care. Depending on your home life, when you think of the word community, so many of us have different thoughts or ideas or pictures in our mind when I say the word community. But when I say the word community, I think of everyone belonging, creating a space for everyone. As Apostle said, we are a ministry where everyone belongs. But what does it look like to create a space for everybody to belong? Not just the LGBTQ plus community, but what does it look like to create and establish a community where Republicans and Democrats can come together and, and, and disagree, but yet love one another? What does it look like to create a community where you have pro-choice and pro-life? What does it look like to have a community where someone believes that you can be healed of homosexuality and others that say it's impossible to change your sexual orientation? What does it look like to create a community for all of us to come together and experience the goodness, the mercy, the hope of Jesus Christ. Well, tonight, that's what I'm going to talk about. Let's open with a word of prayer real quick as we engage into a very thought-provoking talk. Holy Spirit, tonight, I ask that you come into each and every room and space where people are watching. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would open our hearts, that you would open our minds, God, that you would equip us and empower us to receive what you want us to receive tonight. Lord, whether it's a hope-filled word, an encouraging thought, Lord, whether it's a physical healing in our body, Holy Spirit, open ourselves to receive what you want us to receive. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, tonight, I want to have a beer. I'm going to pour. This is a, a Michelob Ultra Infusion beer. It's a line of prickly pure, nice and cool. I'm just going to pour this right here in that glass. And it's pretty chilling. It's been a warm day. And boy, this sure would look good or sound good right about now. Let me ask you a question. As I opened this beer and described the beer and poured it into the glass, what were your thoughts? Did you think, wait a minute, am, am, am I tuning into a Christian organization? It, am, am, I, am I listening to a pastor talk about opening a beer at the beginning of his sermon, his talk, his, his ministry, after he just prayed that God would open our hearts to receive, he just opened a bottle of beer and poured it in a glass. Wait a minute, is he going to drink that? Well, maybe you thought, I, I, I hope he's going to drink that and not waste it. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope that, I, I, save it for me. I'm coming over. I'm driving to Champaign, Illinois right now. Maybe you had a thought. I can't believe that this pastor is even opening a beer when the Bible teaches that maybe we should abstain from drinking alcohol because of what alcohol can do. Right now in this moment, whatever your conviction is, I want to validate and I want to tell you that it's okay. Whether you believe that it's okay for me to drink or for you to drink, or whether you believe that I'm not supposed to touch alcohol, Whatever you believe right now, based on your conviction, your relationship with Jesus Christ, I validate. And tonight I want to talk about what it looks like to not allow our convictions to dictate how we connect with a humanity. And oftentimes in the world that we live in as Christian believers, we allow our, we allow our convictions to dictate how we connect to people. So when we see someone drinking a beer, automatically our thought process goes, that must be a drunk. I wonder how much he drinks every night. He looks a little tipsy. His eyes are a little red. You know, as a young man who was raised in an independent, fundamental, rigid, frigid, frozen, chosen Baptist home, I was raised that we were not allowed to drink alcohol. And anytime I saw someone drinking alcohol, I would immediately assume that they were living in sin. 
I'm going to tell you something right now. As I've grown older and matured in my journey with Jesus, I've discovered this. Romans chapter 14, verses 21, it says this, cultivate your own relationship with God, but don't impose it on others. You're fortunate if your behavior and your belief are coherent, but if you're not sure, if you notice that you are acting in ways inconsistent with what you believe, some day is trying to impose your opinions on others and others trying to please them, then you know that you're out of line. If the way you live isn't consistent with what you believe, then you are wrong. So here's here's where I'm, I, I, I want us to pick up. Uh, 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 cultivate your own relationship with God. Don't impose it on others. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spell out beer tonight in a very fast manner. I don't want to be long. I don't want to extend this time of ministry. Many of you probably have families and, and want to spend time with your family on this Tuesday night. But I want to unlock a couple of principles for you. And I want to help you understand what it means to create a space for community for everyone. And it starts with belong. B-E-E-R. I'm going to spell out. B stands for belong. Create a space for people to belong. One, by cultivating your own relationship with Jesus, not imposing it on others. So I have convictions in my personal life that I'm not going to impose on others. I have a conviction. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time at the pool during the summer. And the reason why I don't spend a lot of time at the pool is because there's a lot of very, very beautiful bodies there. And I don't want my mind to go in places that would cause me to have thoughts or to do anything inappropriate as a man of faith and of God. So I don't spend a lot of time at pools during the summer. Now, that is my personal conviction, okay? I'm not going to tell someone if I see them in bikinis or in thongs at a pool, how dare they be at a pool? No, this is my relationship with Jesus. This is my journey with Jesus. And your journey with Jesus is so important. You've got to cultivate your own relationship with Jesus. And if anything, you want to help people establish what relationship with Jesus looks like. And as you grow in your journey with Jesus, and as you grow in intimacy with the Father, you will begin to have personal convictions based on your journey with the Father. So cultivate your own relationship with Jesus. I'm going to read a little bit out of Romans chapter 14 tonight because I want to unlock what it looks like to create community. And I want to read out of the Bible and what the scripture says about being there for one another. I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, read it for yourself in scripture. As I live and breathe, God says, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will tell the honest truth. And I and I, that I and only I am God. Now I'm reading out of the Message Bible. You can follow along in the version of your choice. But it says in Romans chapter 14, verse 11, I'm going to read it again. As I live and breathe, God says, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will, let the, uh, will tell the honest truth that I and only I am God. So tend to your knitting. You've got your hands full just taking care of your own life before God. Forget about deciding what's right for each other. Here's what you need to be concerned about, that you don't get in the way of someone else making life more difficult than it already is. Here's what Paul is saying. I'm convinced. Jesus convinced me, he says, that everything as it in itself is holy. So I can have a beer. Everything in itself is holy. We, of course, by the way, we treat it or talk about it can contaminate it. So if I'm imposing my convictions and I'm imposing what I believe, I'm not necessarily creating a space for belonging and for what I want as in community. If you confuse, if you confuse others by making a big issue over what they eat or don't eat, you're no longer a companion with them in love, are you? These, remember, are persons for whom Christ died. Would you risk sending them to hell over an item in their diet? Don't you dare let a piece of God's blessed food become an occasion of soul poisoning. God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put in your stomach. For goodness sake, 
It's what God does with your life as he sets it right and puts it together and completes it with joy. Your task is to single-mindedly serve Christ and serve others. Do that and you'll kill two birds with one stone, pleasing the God above you and proving your worth to the people around you. So let's agree to use all our energy in getting along with each other, helping others with encouraging words. Don't drive people down by finding fault on what they do. You're certainly not going to permit an argument over what is served or not served at supper to wreck God's work among you, are you? I said it before and I'll say it again. Everything is good, but it can turn bad if you use it badly. If you use it to trip brothers up and send them sprawling. When you sit down, your primarily concern should not be to feed your own face, but to share the life of Jesus. So be sensitive and courteous to the others who are different than yourself. Don't eat or say or do things that might interfere with free exchange of love. And I'm back to the scripture. So cultivate your own relationship with God and don't impose it on others. How do we create a space of belonging? How can we have a beer together without someone judging? We simply say, I'm not going to allow my convictions to dictate how I connect with the next person. I'm going to shelve my convictions because the person is more important than the conviction that I have. Every person matters. Every story matters. So number one, belong create a space to belong number two this is this is this is hard sometimes but you have to engage you have to engage in conversation you've got to engage in differences you've got to engage in hard topics listen i have a father who doesn't who doesn't affirm my sexuality he's a baptist minister and he ministers every sunday and anytime i see my father uh, his 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 pastor doesn't even doesn't even look at me. His 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 pastor won't even address me because I see myself as a gay identified man. But let me tell you something. I always say, "Hey, pastor, how are you doing? Great seeing you again." I want to greet him with the love of God. Listen, I can be just as frustrated and irritated, and I can I can carry the chip on my shoulder, and I can say, how dare he? he's a pastor, he's a man of God. Well, I might complain about it to a close friend. I might confront my father and say, why didn't you tell him to address me, Dad? But the reality is, I'm not going to allow my frustration to dictate how I communicate the love of God. If I'm walking in love and if I'm practicing this relationship and this journey with Jesus as I'm supposed to, by digging in the word, having a prayer-filled life, a worship-filled life, I'm going to exude, exude love and kindness and peace. Isn't that what Christ wants from all of us? I believe that he does. So one, we've got to create a space to belong. Two, we've got to learn how to engage in hard conversations, embrace differences, Embrace the fact that people are going to believe different than me. My best friend voted for Trump. I wasn't a Trump man, okay? And we had hard conversations. I have people who are pro-lifers that scream and hold signs that they're pro-life. And yet I myself am a pro-life, pro-choice person. I believe in pro-life, but I believe in giving the choice to a woman. Listen, it can be very difficult to have incredibly hard conversations with people who believe different than you that claim faith. I just heard a preacher the other day, and he said, if you're a Democrat, you're not welcome in my church. You're full of demons. And I thought to myself, how dare this pastor make such a statement? Because that isn't an open door to welcoming all folks into the house of God. The Father's heart is to welcome everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, how you are, what you believe. It doesn't matter if you're Baptist, if you're Presbyterian, if you're Catholic, if you're Pentecostal, if you're charismatic, if you're hyper-charismatic, if you're hyper-Pentecostal. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you come to the Father's heart and he welcomes you. So we've got to create a space for people to belong and we've got to be ready to engage in hard conversations and engage those conversations with love. Number three, we've got to encounter difference. 
We've got to encounter difference. You can't create a space of belonging without experiencing differences. And this is so, so important. Differences mean that I open a door for people to question what I believe. And when people come to me and start questioning, why do you believe what you believe and question why I might do things in ministry or in my organization, I can't be pissed about it. I can't be ugly about it. I can't be defensive about it. I've got to be open and willing to respond with the love of God and explain why we do things. And if the person says, I think that that's out of line, that's perfectly fine. You know why? Because I'm cultivating my relationship with Jesus. And I want to create a space where everyone is cultivating their own relationship with Jesus. And we can come together and we can serve this incredible father who I call Papa. We can serve this God and we can engage with each other, connecting in love, in peace, in kindness, in hope, in prayer, in worship, knowing that one person might believe that they can't cut their hair and the person next to them has uh, hair probably short his mind. And we can still love the same Jesus and love on each other. I believe that that is a picture of heaven. And I believe that sometimes God just wants to sit and have a beer with us. He wants to, he, he, he wants to sit and he wants to engage with us right where we are. It doesn't matter if you're in a bar. If you're watching this and you're in a bar right now, I'm stinking thrilled. You know why? Because God's meeting you right where you are. And I'm passionate about this. Several years ago, I launched an organization called Bridge of Hope in South Texas. Now, I remember I was working with a drag queen who had been uh, sexually assaulted by a Christian woman. And uh, I, I'm not going to mention any names, but I, I will tell you that this person was extremely wounded. And this person found out that I was a pastor and I was their business manager. And and I remember him sitting in the office and he said, are you friends with her? And I said, of course, I'm friends with her. But that doesn't mean that I believe what she did was right. And he began weeping and he said, you know, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal. I was raised in church and he's this beautiful drag queen. And, and he's like, but I don't even want to do church anymore. He's like, I gave that up a long time ago because I saw all these hypocrites and all these people. They judge me and they point their finger at me. And he's like, Daniel, I still love God. I just can't do it anymore. He's like, I honestly don't even know if I really believe anymore. About three months later, I launched my organization and he had owned a local bar in the community. And he said, Daniel, after watching you love people, even those that you disagree with, he's like, I'd love to open my bar so that you can meet every Sunday, bring your community. And would you do church and worship there? And man, I was playing Planet Shakers. And if you don't know who Planet Shakers are, you need to check them out. Planet Shakers worship. Their, their sound is like very clubby sometimes, like really poppy. And I was playing Planet Shakers at the beginning of church. And, and I was so thrilled. People would walk in and they would think that they were walking into a club. But in reality, they were walking in a church. I wanted to create a space for community to belong. And yes, it was designated to attract the LGBT community, but I partnered with people outside the LGBT community that were allies, and I asked them, would you participate and help us create a space for people to feel like it's safe to be them? I'm not going to point my finger at them. And trust me, we had plenty of people coming to church drunk because they were out clubbing at that club the night before. They were tipsy. <laughs> they were hungover. Those were some of the best days of my life. You know why? Because I was creating a space for someone to encounter the rich love of Jesus. We were able to baptize in that year 27 different people. Why? Because we created a space for people to belong. We engaged in conversation and we were willing to encounter difference. Number two, number four, R, we've got to refocus our thinking. We've got to refocus our thinking. The Bible, saying, the Bible says, think on that these things that which are lovely, pure, kind, and righteous. And sometimes as Christians, we get so stuck on being religious. We get so stuck on Christianese language. Well, how are you doing? I'm blessed and not fa I'm blessed and highly favored, praise God. <laughs> you know, I'm listen, I didn't ask if you were blessed and highly favored. I asked how you're doing. I want to know how you're doing. I care about you. I don't care about your, your Christianese language. Uh, I want to know if, if you're struggling. I want to know if, 
if you're okay. I want to know if your week's been bad. And, and if you if you look at me and say my week's been crappy, but you use a different adjective, then you know what? Perfect. I I want you. I want to hear curse words in church. I want church to smell like weed. I, I want church to, to, to have drugs at the altar because it means that we're making a difference. It means that we're really creating a space for everybody. I think that's the kingdom of God. So I challenge you today. Would you be willing to crack open a beer with me? Would you be willing to create a space for belonging, for engaging in conversation, for encountering, being willing to encounter the differences of others and be willing to refocus your thinking and not be a religious thinker, not be a negative thinker, but a positive thinker. Think on those things, that which are lovely, pure, noble, upright, holy, righteous, kind, giving, willing, compassionate. Would you be willing to be a community that stands by each other through good and through bad? When you know someone has committed what you might think is the, the, the uh, impardonable sin, would you be willing to stand by them and love them? Even if, even if you have to advocate and say the person needs to be behind bars, would you still be willing to love them and care for them? Because the reality is, it's what Paul talks about right here. He says, would you love? Would you love? Would you love? First Thessalonians, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to come to a close here. Just lost my place. I have this written out here. Is this helping you? If it's helping you, would you comment in the thread below? And would you let me know that it's encouraging you? Because I I, I, I want I, I want us to get it, guys. And I'm passionate about this stuff. I don't just talk about this stuff. I live this stuff, man. And I want to be able to live my life as an example. Of Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 17. Verse 19. Out of, the, out of the message Bible. Regarding life together and getting along with each other. You don't need me to tell you what to do. You're God taught. You're God taught in these matters. So here's what I need you to do. Would you just love one another? You. You're already good at it. Your friends all over the province of Macedonia are the evidence. So I want you to keep it up. Get better and better at it. Stay calm, mind your business, do your own job. You've heard all of this from us before, but a reminder never hurts. We want you living in a way that will command the respect of outsiders, not lying around sponging off your friends. What we want you we want you living in a way that will command the respect of outsiders. I'm going to say it again. We want you living in a way that will command the respect of outsiders. So what do you do? Love one another. How do we love? How do we create space for each other? How do we build an established community? We create a space of belonging. Authentic, unconditional belonging. We engage in conversations. We encounter differences and we're willing to stick with each other even though we disagree. And we're willing to refocus our thinking. We're willing to refocus and compromise, not necessarily our convictions, but compromise my willingness to not connect and connect with those that are different than me. I'm going to say this, and I say it very respectfully, those of us in the LGBT community have been bruised and beaten by the Christian culture. We've been torn apart. We've been, as you pull pork apart, you pull meat, uh, pull pork and pull meat apart for a sandwich. That's the way a lot of us feel. We've been pulled apart. We've been kicked to the side, kicked to the curb. We And all we want is to be loved and accepted and affirmed. We want people to believe in us. And yet, when it comes time to love the church that has hurt us, 
we're so ready to backlash and hurt them, speak ill against them. I want to challenge my community just like I challenge the rest of every community. Yes, we've been hurt. Hurt people that hurt people. But the truth is, God can come into our life. He can shift that hurt and that pain around. And he can create a purpose, build a life for you. Don't let your pain, the pain of your past, the pain that you've experienced in church, keep you from fulfilling the purpose that God has on your life. Rather, let the pain that has bruised you, that has kicked you aside, that has made you feel obsolete, unseen, unnoticed, unloved, let that pain produce the purpose of God in your life to love, to forgive, let go, let go, and, and, and help us engage, help us encounter, help us refocus, help us build that bridge, help us create a space of belonging so that we can have a God-filled community. Listen, I want you to know that I love you. Man, I love you so much, and I believe in you, and I believe in this message. And you know what? I'm going to go and throw out this beer because I don't like beer. But I'm willing to have a beer with anybody any day if it means that I can love you and I can share hope and give peace and give an encouraging word to help you fight your fight. Listen, we're in this together. Me and you, we're in this together. Your story matters. My story matters. And together, I believe that there is power to make a difference in the world so people can know who and what the love of God is. I hope you receive this today. Can we pray before we let the apostle come back? Thank you, Apostle, for giving me the opportunity of sharing this talk tonight and for being willing to take a risk with me as I, I present a thought-provoking message. Listen, if you need prayer tonight, please reach out and let us know what we can do and how we can minister to you. I want you to know that we love you and we believe in you and we believe that God has a purpose for your life. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this space. Lord, whatever anyone is going through right now, whatever they're facing, God, we want you to come in the middle of their storm. And Lord, we ask you to bring a calm. We ask you to bring peace, a, a calmness to that storm, peace to the storm. Father, I pray that you would, you would release finances to those that are needing a financial miracle. Lord, those that are facing infirmity, we command infirmity to go into dry places right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare your word that no weapon formed against any man, any woman will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we declare your word. Lord, we say that you will not leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we declare what King David's words were. Lord, in your presence, we are safe. And so we are running to you tonight. We're asking you to reveal to us, God, how to let go of that pain, that hurt, and, and become God-filled bridge builders, creating spaces of belonging encountering difference, engaging in hard conversations, and refocusing our thinking on God thoughts so that we can see people encounter you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Apostle. Such a great word. Thank you uh, to our executive pastor, the precious Pastor Daniel Guerrera. And I want you to know this. I stand behind you because I trust God in you. I believe in the God in you. And you don't have to ever be afraid. If you say God said it for you to preach it, I'm willing to stand behind you on it. Because listen, this is a ministry that is for the unchurched. This is a ministry that is for the transgender. This is a ministry that is for the uh, transvestite, as they would call them. Uh, but this is, this is a ministry for such a for such a time as this, this is a ministry uh, for that and, and and everything and 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 we are 
we are going to uh, be the hands and feet of Jesus virtually. And we're also going to be about be re recreating the beloved community that we call church. For too long, church has been brick and mortar with concrete hearts. <laughs> For too long, church has been brick and mortar with concrete hearts. And we want to be a place and a space where God can move for us and God can deliver us and God can set us free. Um, wow. <laughs> Looks like we got a need in the comment section, but I don't know how we can address that. Um, hmm. Did you see it, Pastor Daniel? I, 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 I can't see it. I can't see it on my end. Hold on. Maybe I should here, maybe I should post it here. This comment, there's a need. Here, I'll post it. All right, there it is. There it is right there. Um I don't know how to to go here with this, but there's obviously someone that has a need. I don't know all the details of it, but if anybody wants to give, if you're watching both the the, the live now or the replay, we welcome you to reach out to this this family and give to them. Personally, I would if I had it, but I don't. <laughs> uh, but if I did, I would definitely do it. And if I if I come into something between now and tomorrow, I'll make sure that I take this down and I'll set something over um, to make sure that their needs are met. But we're going to pray. I, I put the need up there so we could pray. Father, we thank you tonight for all of your goodness. Father, we ask that yes. you would meet their need according to your riches and glory. God, you know what they have need of. And Father, we ask that, th that those that have tender hearts, that if they watch the replay, Father, and they feel so compelled that they would that they would sow something to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And Father, we thank you right now that your word says that you, God, supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we ask you right now to look upon this family and to move for them in Jesus' name. God, surround them with provision. God, let your provision meet them at the place of their need, at the point of their need. And Father, we'll bless you, we'll honor you, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Lord, we, we ask you, God, that you would surround them, God, with angels of provision, both heavenly angels and human ones, God. Allow your people to be in the right place at the right time. Orchestrate their steps that they might have what they need. And Father, we'll thank you, we'll bless you, and we'll glorify you in Jesus' name. And listen uh, to you, John Ford, when you get uh, tomorrow, uh, message, the uh, message the ministry and let us know what's going on. And so we can so we can stay in support with you. We want to walk with you through this journey. And as much as as much as God will allow and, and, and our resources will allow, we will try to help you. Um, but I wanted I didn't want your need to go unnoticed. Amen. Which is why I put it up. Hallelujah. Just 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 wanted you to know that we're not just another ministry. On, on Facebook, but we're serious about helping people. So please, uh, please, John Ford, please make sure you uh, message message the ministry on tomorrow to let us know what's going on, and we will we will try our best to do what we can, even if it, even if it has to come from me. I'm good with that. I'm I'm willing to do that. Um, we will sow into your life if, if it, it, as soon as I get a hold of something, I will do that because I want to make sure. That I'm not just talking, that I'm not just talking love, that I'm doing love. Yeah. But Pastor Daniel, thank you so much. Um, thank you all for joining me. Hey, Pastor Daniel, stick around for one moment after the broadcast. But thank you so much for joining me tonight and joining us. And like I said to uh, to the uh, to the Ford family, please let us know. We would love to do that. As a matter of fact, just put. Um, Ronnie, just pin the, uh, the church number in the comments. It's at 352-561-8304. Can you do it? Let me get back to it. Um, but 
we um we'll do that. So Father, we just thank you tonight for all of your goodness, all of your mercy, and all of your tender goodness to us, God. We ask that you let this word go down into our hearts and our minds and bear fruit, that we might be the people that can have a beer, can can be the demonstration of radical hospitality, radical love, radical grace, radical mercy, radical forgiveness. God, help us. Watch this. Help us, God, to love those that are that we perceive to be least likely a candidate for love. But God, what a great deception. There is none that you don't love. God, you love us all. You love us whether you love us whether we are walking with you or not. Yeah. And Papa, we say thank you for that love. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. So, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a blessed night and look forward to seeing you all uh, Saturday night for our Sabbath service. God bless you. Wow. <laughs>